Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at the game of the century, or one of the games of the century. The last video I looked at, the 2006 Rose Bowl between the University of South Carolina and the Texas Longhorns. So, with that being said, let's go on to the next one. Which is, the next year, Michigan versus Ohio State. And I'm not sure why this, like, I don't want to see the results, but I need to know exactly why the game's so good, but I, I don't want to see the results. Is that going to be possible? I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> Let's try. Um, Ten years ago now. Big Ten Network, Big Ten Network, Big Ten Network. Okay. Okay. Big Ten Network. Greatest season. Ohio State beats Michigan. No? Let's look at this one. Oh, this is going to be sick. Ohio State. Alright, alright guys, sorry. Michigan, you're going to have to wait. We're going to look at Ohio, we're going to focus on Ohio State. Uh, this video, okay? Let's do this. Let me just let me just look it up first. Ohio State, commonly referred to Ohio State or OSU, is a large, primarily residential public university in Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Well, I know about Columbus because the Arnold Classic bodybuilding competition is held in Ohio, and um, I'd love to get there one day. I really would. And you know what? No, it's actually in March, so I won't be able to do both at the same time, unfortunately. University was originally known as the Ohio Agricultural and Mechanical College. The college began with a focus on training students in various agricultural and mechanical disciplines, but it developed into a comprehensive university under the direction of then-Governor, late President Rutherford B. Hayes. It has since grown into the third largest university campus in the United States. Along with its main campus in Columbus, Ohio State operates regional campuses in Lima, Mansfield, Marion, Newark, and Worcester. The university has an extensive student life program with over a thousand student organizations. That is fucking sick. The Ohio State athletics team competes in Division I of the NCAA and is known as the Ohio State Buckeyes. University is a member of the Big Ten Conference for majority of sports. What about football? Football! The Recreational and Physical Activity Center. That looks... Oh, that just looks like my mouth's watering thinking about like training in that. Seriously guys. Seriously. Athletics, um, have we got football? Ohio State is one of six universities to have won national championships in all three major men's sports. Baseball, basketball, and football. Alright, we're going to stop there, guys. The 2006 season, Ohio State, the Buckeyes. Let's do this. Whether it's not just getting ready for a championship game, but getting Let's do ready this. for a regular season game, or getting ready for a biology class, or whatever it happens to be. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. That is a college football stadium. That looks, it just looks, it looks good enough to just frame. I mean, look at it. Look at that, look at that grass. Look at the lines. Look at the, look at the end zone. I love the end zones. I've got to say, I love the end zones being a different color, being like real bright. Um, I've said it in a previous video, but if you were a running back, if you were a wide receiver, you got the ball. And you saw that in front of you, you saw your colours in front of you, I mean it would be like a moth to a flame, wouldn't it? You'd just, just be trying to get there at all costs. Hmm. Very good. Game, but getting ready for a regular Why is there only um, posts or goal posts at one end? Tell me that. Season game, we're getting ready for a biology class or whatever. Happens Jim Trestle! At that moment, you have to be at your best. That's something that the game of football teaches. Every day, you better be ready to go. Defending co-conference champion Ohio State entered the 2006 season with a target on their back. 
both the media and coaches' polls rank the Buckeyes number one in the country. When you're preseason number one, and you see Sports Illustrated there, kind of take a picture of Troy Smith, and you're thinking, wow, this is really big, you know? So there was a lot of excitement, a lot of expectation for that season. The goal is always to win the national championship. There he is, Gonzalez. You know, that year was no different. Now that said, we had quite a few starters coming back, especially on offense. Anytime you have your quarterback returning, like we had Troy Smith coming back, and he had his whole crew of receivers with Teddy Ginn and Anthony Gonzalez and Brian Robisky. Antonio Pittman was coming now, back. Now, you guys got to tell me, what is the deal with the, the, the paint across the bottom of the eyes? Is that to look tough, or is that actually going to help you in the game? Let me know. Beanie Wells. Either way, I like it, but... Coming back, plus our offensive line. Defensively, you know, we had lost a couple first-rounders. We were losing A.J. Hawk and Bobby Carpenter and those guys off the defense, so, uh, you know, we didn't know for sure how we were going to come along defensively. And you want to talk about a lot of pressure, I think, when, you know, you're a young guy, you have a lot of young guys in that defense. You really have a lot of unknowns. The Buckeyes' true standing would be tested early against defending national champion Texas. Ooh, Texas so Texas in the last game. Before they had beaten us, um, that's when they had Vince Young. Texas had a great team. We knew they did. We competed head to head. It ended, you know, in the last moment of the game. Vince Young came up with the big play. Got a lot of time. Throws in his own cut. Touchdown, Texas! What a great play for the Horns! Smith. Yeah, Vince Young was a, a, a he was a monster, man. He, he he ran the ball. He was an amazing player. He got them that win at the end too, the, the year before. Hmm. There's the safety and the Texas Longhorns win the historic showdown with the Ohio State Buckeyes. So as 2006 is coming along, we're going to have a chance to go and be in a storied place, Memorial Stadium down in Texas. We knew it was going to be a very good Texas team without Vince Young, but they had a whole bunch of other people returning. And we knew it was going to be a great game. In Columbus, there was no doubt as to who was the Buckeyes leader. Troy was one of the toughest guys I've ever played with. I mean, he, he used to try to run, run people over, he'd run around it, he'd throw it over top of it, he'd do anything. In his senior season and second full year at the helm of the Buckeye offense, Troy Smith had matured into a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. It started to become a reality uh, pretty much after the Texas game because that's when the talk really started to come about. To me, it was a fantasy. You know, me being from the inner city of Cleveland, things like that are not supposed to happen to us. Uh, so definitely I did dream about it, but... Uh, my whole life, the more and more I thought about great things happening, they didn't happen. Troy has come from meager, meager upbringing and uh, was always a guy that's always scrapping and fighting to get some of the things that he's had to get. I think in the back of Troy's mind, he wanted to win the Heisman Trophy. I think there's no question he was, he was a driven young man. He wanted to win first as a team, but then those individual awards, uh, we always say, if you win games as a team, sometimes those come along. When he stepped in the huddle, it was, it was pretty apparent that he was in charge. And he could look you in the eye, not say a word, and they were all locked on to, to him. They could look to him, and he could be able to make some plays and bring them back into a situation. It appeared at this one times. As the Big Ten campaign entered its final month, all eyes focused on college football's biggest rivalry. They start having like a countdown on ESPN and ABC. They'd be like, hey, watch Ohio State versus Northwestern just a whole week before they take on Michigan. And it was kind of so drawn up and the hype was so long that it, it was just an amazing dynamic. I'd be lying if I didn't say I didn't look at their schedule and say, okay, they're going to win out. And look at our schedule and say, okay, if we take care of business, which we should, we're going to win out. This is going to be one heck of a game. <laughs> look at this. It's like a war. Neither team disappointed. Like two trains running on the same track, 
number one Ohio State and number two Michigan were set to collide with more than the Big Ten title at stake. And a birth in the national championship game. The Brandstatter. All of that on top of one versus two in Columbus, and that game explodes nationally. Not for 103 games previously have they ever come into this game, both teams undefeated. Never Whoa, before. both teams undefeated. Or have they had so much on the line in terms of a national championship? Troy Smith and Jim Trestle had taken control of this series in a way that really turned it on its ear. With each win by Ohio State, the pressure had built to the point that this was a year that Michigan really had to win this game. All or nothing today, baby! Michigan was a popular pick uh, by all sorts of people who looked at the defense with Lamar Woodley and Alan Branch and thought that they could really handle Troy Smith and handle the Buckeyes running game, and this was Michigan's year. Thursday after practice, I'd asked Holden to come and speak to the team. And um, he came in and he was not feeling well. But um, I asked if he wanted a chair. No, he didn't want a chair. He didn't want to stand and talk to the team. And he did. He's a tough guy. He's not going to show if he's feeling weak or anything like that. So he looked normal. You know, he, he talked like he always talked. You know, yelled at us. Did the things he had to do to get us ready for the game. And, and, and any way else, it wouldn't have been both. We disperse and we're meeting uh, the next day. I'm on my way into the office. He uh, died. About 9.30. And I hear over the radio that uh, Bo has uh, got a heart attack. Fuck. Whoa. And then I get a call. Oh, I just got the goosebumps again, guys. That he has passed away. Fuck, man. He gave his final speech to rev these guys up, and then he passed away. He put his last ounce of effort into doing that. What a fucking, what a fucking legend. Come on, boys. In those next 12 hours, you did not have what you would ideally like to have. 70 guys and all their coaches thinking about the game. We've never made excuses, but I don't think there's any question that Bo's passing away was a negative for our team. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we settle back and await the college football showdown everyone has been debating since mid-September. Michigan's very explosive offense. They could score at any point in time. We gave our defense fits that day. We want to run the ball and not a you know, get the run game going like we did all year and then go up top on you know, first drive, we, that we did that pretty well. You know, we came down and went right down the score down. They come back with the money back. Michigan strikes first. We knew we were going to have to score some points. And it wasn't going to be uh, maybe one of those old traditional 12-7 to 7, uh, Ohio State-Michigan games. We just felt going into that game, looking at their defense, that if you're going to get in a phone booth and get in a battle, you know, it might be tough. But if you were going to spread them out and make them cover the whole field, that uh, was going to be better. If you look at that first offensive possession by Ohio State, you see a coach who knows he has a senior quarterback who can handle whatever he wants to do. Trestle has Troy Smith at the height of his command, doing the sort of things that you don't see a college quarterback do very often. And a tone is set at that point that this is going to be a game where the Michigan defense is going to see an attack it hasn't seen all season. Throws for a wide open touchdown and it's Rory Hall. Nice pass. You're looking at a Michigan Ohio State game where they're running shotguns. When has Ohio State run shotgun spread offense? Primarily the end. What is a shotgun spread offense? What is a shotgun offense? A shotgun is a formation used by the offensive team. A shotgun formation is mainly used for passing plays. Instead of the quarterback receiving the snap, he stands farther behind the line of scrimmage, often five to seven yards back. Sometimes the quarterback will have a back on one or both sides before the snap, while other times he will be the lone player in the backfield. The shotgun formation can offer certain advantages. The offensive linemen have more room to maneuver, 
behind the scrimmage line and form a tighter, more cohesive pocket in which the quarterback is protected. If the quarterback has speed, mobility or both, he can use this formation to scramble before his pass or to run to an open field position, usually gaining first down yardage. The formation also has weaknesses. The defense knows a pass is more than likely coming up, although some running plays can be run effectively from the shotgun and there is a higher risk of a botched snap, of course, because he's not handing it back, he's got to pass it back. But basically, he just the quarterback has more room to do stuff. Is that right? Okay. Tired game. Well, that was their game plan, and it worked. Game tied 7-7. Michigan seems to have Ohio State stop. It's uh, second four at midfield. Ohio State gives the ball to Dean Wells. Sean Crable is suddenly in the backfield. He's about to take Dean Wells for a loss. And he just can't quite get there. Oh, mate, what a run! 14-7 Ohio State. One little break, one little play. But then when you add it all up and you look back, a game like this is a series of little plays. Ohio State, they immediately stop the Michigan offense. And then they come back out on offense. They start driving. Good work. Go. Go. Oh. They come up the line of scrimmage in, in a real clear short yardage situation. And it looks like they're going to hand the ball off for a dive. And that's what they do. They run the play and they hand the ball off for a dive. Yeah, right. Oh, that's... I like that. I like that. 21-7 Ohio State, and, and it's just shot on the Michigan sidelines. It was just a brilliant play by Trussell. They had never shown that formation all year. They had never shown that play all That's year. That's awesome. And you could just tell that they had gone into this game, maybe into the season, saying if we get into this situation, we're going to take a crap like this. And it was just, it was just absolutely brilliant. We always say that football is a game of pressure, and by doing a lot of different things, as long as we could do them well, that was going to apply pressure, and you know we're going to need it. It's several times that Michigan could have just given up. I mean, where Ohio State had the momentum, everything was going its way, and, and they just kept fighting back. Guys laying down the sideline. You see that guy who came up before saying he's working for scout.com? I could definitely see myself working for a website like that. Rivals.com, scout.com, NFL.com. Something where I can create content about sport and be paid for it. I mean, that would just be the ultimate. That would be the ultimate, seriously. They put it in the hands of number 16, Adrian Arrington. We knew we could score on them, and they knew they could score on us. Or maybe I could start my own website. You know what? I just thought entrepreneurial just then. I was like, fuck that. I don't want to be working for someone else. I might as well just do it myself. What could it be? What could it be? Is there a NFLscout.com? I'm sure there is. Is it a footballtalent.com? Who knows, man? Who knows where this shit's gonna end? All I know is I'm excited. <laughs> Gonzalez! Don't let them back in it. This one's getting real interesting. You had Michigan coming in with a top five defense, completely obliterated, run through by Ohio State. With Mike Leedy Blake. And Sam again. Touchdown, Ohio State. This time, it's Antonio Pittman. Nice. But Michigan didn't back down at all. Shit. What happened there? But Michigan didn't back down at all. Oh no! You can't do much else on the defensive line than that. It was stingy against the run. Great job by the offensive line. Mike was just the guy that was not going to be denied. You kept looking up at the scoreboard and you, you wonder who, whoever had the ball last was going to win that football game. 
fourth quarter. Ohio State precariously holding on to a four-point lead. Troy Smith engineers a furious drive. Smith has to take off. Dances. Go. He'll throw incomplete. And a penalty flag. Crable gets the 15-yard call on a third down play that gives Ohio State the ball back. They'd have been forced to kick. Michigan would have had it last. Might have gone down and scored and won that game. But that play makes a huge difference. What was wrong with it? Makes good on the opportunity. What the fuck? What's wrong with this? What is wrong with this? He'll throw incomplete. And a penalty flag. Is, is, that, is, that, is that when they pull out the yellow flag when there's a penalty? Smith has to take off. Dance is free now. He'll throw incomplete. Who threw the flag down? Is it the coach or the or the um, ref? I can't even tell. I can't even tell what just happened just then. That's a big call. Play that gives Ohio State the ball back. They'd have been forced to kick. Michigan would have had it last. Might have gone down and scored and won that game. But that play makes a huge difference because Ohio State makes good on the opportunity. He's got to fire for it. In zone. That was close. Goes back to Remiski. Even when the game seemed over, Michigan could not stop. They kept at it, kept at it. Got that pass to Ecker late and then tried the onside kick. I mean, it was a game to the final second. Looks like a rugby Two kickoff. Heavyweights railing against each other for 60 minutes. Ohio State will play for a national championship. I've talked to Mike Hart after every game he's played here. And I've... Toilet break! Nick Minnett. I've never seen him snap the way he did after that game. It was so unlike Mike Hart. It was a sign of, of just how much this one hurt. The reason you come to Michigan is that, you know, to try to win a national championship. And when you're that close, when you're inches away, it's tough. Would be. Be devastating to some of these guys. The city is on cloud nine, obviously. Um, you know, the fans rush the field. I remember kind of getting claustrophobic when they're on the field and there's 100,000 people on their way. Oh my god! The locker room. There were a lot of hugs, a lot of, you know, and everybody was just excited. I mean, you know, it was awesome. Troy had a great game. His performance there, you know, was exceptional and it. It iced a, a winning, uh, undefeated regular season, and I think that went a long way to, to setting that Heisman Trophy up for him. There you go, another Heisman Trophy. Honestly, all these guys. So that was that was my first look at the Ohio State Buckeyes college football team, and um, yeah, what a story, what a season. How are you doing this season? I'm not sure, but I'm going to follow it. I'm going to finally try and get my bloody head round the way that the Big Ten, the Pac-12, all these, all these other Rose Bowls, Sugar Bowl, Texas Bowl, that stuff, I'll get it eventually. But I've taken on the mammoth giant that is the NFL first. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting there, and I've just started going to college football, which I cannot wait to do. I think college football is definitely going to be the, the stuff that I gravitate to a little bit more just for the fact that I could possibly play for a college one day, you know, it's, it's not completely out of reach, whereas watching the NFL, it's sort of like, it's sort of a little bit out of reach. Um, I like, like for example, I like watching movies that I can relate to. I like watching movies and documentaries that are real, about real stuff, true life stories, stuff that I can relate to and I can imagine, holy shit, maybe one day I could do that. You know, dramas and sci-fi stuff and and things that just are completely not real you know fiction stuff I'm not into because it's not it doesn't relate to me I can't imagine myself there and so it just doesn't give me the same buzz as watching something in real life does like documentaries stories like this and college football so if you have liked this video please press like if you want to see more please subscribe and I'll see you back here very shortly for another video